Summer officially comes to an end next week. So what will that mean for Johnny Benson's summer hot streak? JB's quest for his first Truck Series championship continues from Las Vegas with last year's champ less than 100 points back. Catch all the action next Saturday with the setup at 9, followed by Racing Under the Lights live from Sin City, only on speed. Be there. Bright lights, big city, Viva Las Vegas next week here in Loudon. Sunny skies today. We hope for the same tomorrow as your racing fix continues on Sunday. There you see your racing menu, and we'll be back with you again next Saturday from Las Vegas. Well, here in the Boston area, you either dunk a basketball with the world champion Celtics or you dunk a Krula. Dunkin' Donuts headquartered nearby. Those are some of the things we're looking forward to. Of course, we're also looking forward to seeing what the driver standing by with Ray is going to be doing today, right? In a few seconds, Christy, he's going to be putting on his uh, foot protectors here. Kyle Busch is the number one seed in the chase for their first Sprint Cup championship, and yet you are truck racing. Is this because you can learn something to make you better over there, or is this your game of golf? Uh, I'm not sure what I can really learn. Our cup car is pretty far off, so... Uh... You know, we'll just have some fun here today and see if we can't race up front and uh, have a good solid effort today for our Toyota Tundra. Okay, we hope you have fun on Sunday also. Kyle Busch with 18 wins so far in NASCAR racing in 2008. Never count him out. We talked about dunking basketballs or donuts. This is NASCAR slam dunk. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series racing here at Loudon. Will the championship picture become more clear? It's the Camping World RV Rental 200. You will see it on speed right now. Benson is making a late charge. He's on the charge to the inside in turn one. Johnny Benson has been the man from the drop of the green flag. Looking for two in a row in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Johnny Benson will win the Kentucky. Hornaday down to the inside, trying to make the challenge. Hornaday turns the wick up one more time. And the inside of Kyle Busch for the lead on the back straightaway. What an amazing story he is putting together here in 2008. Around one day is the lead truck. A great battle. Welcome to New England, and welcome to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Camping World RV Rental 200. We are in Loudoun, New Hampshire, in an overcast day, but the sun is breaking through there to keep the temperatures just perfect for racing. 75 degrees, just a slight breeze, a perfect day for getting out and enjoying racing. We want to take a look at our four-point standings. Up on top, Johnny Benson with a 94-point lead over Ron Hornaday. Again, 25 points went away from that lead last week. As Hornaday won the race, Johnny Benson finished in third. Again, that's after 17 of the 25 races scheduled in the 2008 season. Florida One, Rick Allen, Phil Parsons, and Michael Waltrip with you again for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Now, we come to Loud New Hampshire and the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Phil, this racetrack has been a difficult one for a lot of guys to accomplish. It really has. To me, it's a little bit of a tricky racetrack. Real, real long straightaways, fairly tight, relatively flat corners. They added a lane at the bottom of the racetrack a few years ago to try to increase passing. It's a little bit flatter down there. It's really tough to get a bite down there, but you'll see guys run the middle of the racetrack, even up in the third lane to go side by side around here. But all in all, a great racetrack. There is a rumor that they're talking about changing the configuration right. of this racetrack for next season. So this may be the last time that these guys run on this configuration. How about these guys that are running this racetrack? <laughs> These competitors are torn up right now. They watch the Cup cars practice. They watch the Camping World Series race, and they watch the modified cars all get on this racetrack and mix it up since they were last on it. So right now, you've got a bunch of anxious guys down there getting ready to climb these trucks and do battle. So look for action early because they want to go. They're ready. Yeah, and remember, we didn't have qualifying because of rain, and so they are setting the field by owner points. That means we've got our top two contenders right up front in this race. And that will be fun to watch, too. <laughs> they both want those five points bad. They want to get that lead on the first lap. How about a little advice here? Carl Edwards, one of the chase competitors, giving Colin Brown a little advice before the race starts. Let's go trackside for pre-race activities. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remove your hats as the New Hampshire United States Air Force Cadets present our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Father Bill Desham, St. Patrick's Church in Jeffrey, New Hampshire, delivers today's invocation. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the wonderful world you have made for us. Help us to enjoy its beauty and so be led closer to you. O oh God, you are never far off from those who serve you. With fatherly protection, you always guard those who trust in you. By your grace, be the guide going before these drivers who will be racing today, their pit crews, safety crews, and all workers at the track. Protect them from adversity so that they may arrive safely at the finish line. Bless and protect all the race fans here today that they may enjoy every moment of the race and return home safely at the end of the day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing and welcome Denise Doucette of Milan, New Hampshire, as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the heart Pageantry continues as we're done with the invocation and national anthem. The drivers now will climb into the race trucks and get ready for 200 laps here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And welcome back to the Great Northeast here in Loudoun, New Hampshire, the Camping World RV Rental 200 about to get underway. The drivers still strapping into their race trucks, about ready to start the engines. Before they do that, we want to take a look at our Camping World track description. Just over a mile, this racetrack. Yeah, you can see the corners, Mikey, are banked 12 degrees. They sure seem flatter than that. And again, the bottom of the racetrack is a little bit flatter than the second and third groove. And I think why they seem so flat, Phil, is because you're hauling the mail down into the corners. Look at these straightaways. They're very long. And so uh, you're looking at 1,500 feet right. of room to take 600 horsepower and mat it. And these guys fly down in the corner at over probably 160 miles an hour, and then they got to turn left on a flat turn, so it's very difficult. When we talk strategy, let's look at our Camping World race analysis. The pit window, 80 to 90 laps. That seems awfully high. We are expecting to see at least two pit stops today. Yeah, right? without a doubt, we're going to see two pit stops probably, and uh, I think most of the guys would like to get in, you know, somewhere around 60, 70 laps anyway. It, the, the, that that could be subjective though you could see some two tire things you could see some gas and go you don't know what's going to happen on the pit strategy because we don't know how this track is going to how these trucks are going to stick to this track we've just had a modified race so these guys will be a little bit confused at the start right and i think it'll be a little bit interesting to see how they decide to play out their strategy in the garage almost to a man the crew chiefs were all talking about the tire wear not 
that much. It wasn't wearing out, and so the potential for two tire stops is very high. The crowd is ready for it. Let's go down and hear the command. Fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome Camping World District Manager Rick Chambers as he gives the command. Gentlemen, start your engines. I like how that guy got right to it. Quick and to the point yeah. right there. Didn't waste any time. Yeah. Right. We in. introduced the man and he says, get him going. <laughs> he may have jumped the start. The guys out front aren't going to jump the start, though. Johnny Benson and Ron Hornaday, they are getting ready to take this championship battle right to the end. Welcome back. Trucks now rolling off of pit road and onto the racetrack for the Camping World RV Rental 200. Out New Hampshire, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Her new ownership this year. Luke Smith purchasing this racetrack at the beginning of the year, taking over. And let's take a look at our starting grid for today's Camping World RV Rental 200. Again, Johnny Benson, Ron Hornaday will make up row number one. Qualifying was rained out earlier today, and so it is set by owner points. We want to take a look and shine a spotlight on a few different drivers. Four to be exact. We're starting off with Ray Dunlap. I believe your spotlight shined on the 40. Absolutely. And the driver this week, Paul Poulter. He comes from Surrey, United Kingdom. This is just his second start in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He does a lot of racing in England in trucks, but the big difference, they only have 300 horsepower. I asked him what his favorite track is. He said normally a mile and a half, but he has never been on a racetrack like right here at New Hampshire. Their goal today, a top 20. Adam? And Timothy Peters in the field today, starting in the 32nd position. He's one of the guys that hated to see qualifying rained out here earlier today because they felt like they had a very good race truck. Originally weren't scheduled to be here, but this team continuing to gain experience. Also scheduled to make starts at Martinsville and Homestead, possibly Phoenix. Their goal, find a sponsor so they can run full-time in 2009. Phil? Adam, I want to take a look at the number 81, NationRides.com Chevrolet of Donnie Leah. This is Donnie's first of two starts in this truck, owned by Randy Moss Motorsports. He will also run Las Vegas next week. Donnie won one of the most exciting races we had this season at Mansfield. Three wide going in turn three, was able to win that race in only a seventh or eighth career start. So Donnie Leah starts from the 18th position looking for victory number two. Mikey? Three wide on the littlest truck we got, Phil. I didn't know they could fit three wide there. Let's take a look at Jason White, right there on the outside of row 10, starting 20th. He's in the Gunbroker Dot and Palm Toyota. That's right, I've said Toyota. They're just trying to figure out what they're going to do going forward, what kind of brand they're going to race. He wants to get Gunbroker.com in victory lane so bad he can't even see. And that's this is part of the evaluation of how to do that. So those are the spotlights we're taking a look at today. Our director, Roger Vinson, has plenty of cameras that he can use to paint the pictures today. Four of those cameras will actually be on board. We've got David Starr, Todd Bodine, Ron Hornaday, and Kyle Busch all carrying onboard cameras today for us here at this racetrack. Let's go back track side, Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, I want to talk about crew chiefs. You know, it's always about the drivers, about the drivers. Well, how about crew chiefs? Dennis Conner has the most victories in this series, but there's a new guy on the top of the box for Mike Skinner this week. Doug Richard, who sometimes visits the booth as announcer for us, is on top calling the shots, and he plans to finish out the year with Skinner. Skinner has not gone to victory lane yet this year, but when you see Doug Richard with 10 wins, he's won with Carl Edwards and Ron Hornaday, hoping to add Mike Skinner to his list. Adam? And Dennis Setzer in the field today, of course, coming off that runner-up finish last week at Gateway. And this is a place where he could continue his momentum of back-to-back -back top 10 finishes because he led a number of laps and won here back in 1999. Setzer starting 10th this afternoon here at New Hampshire. Gets Setzer to the 99 winner. 93 laps led. It was Hornaday a year ago that dominated at this racetrack. And oh, by the way, he started in the number two position on the outside of row number one a year ago in that domination. The championship battle begins right here today. Johnny Benson, Ronnie Hornaday, get the green flag, we're underway. Look at Matt Crafton looking to the inside already as they go into one. Ron Hornaday has the line that I think he might prefer on the start field. He's wound up on the high side. There's a lot of grip up there. He's looking to lead that first lap, and he's driven out on Johnny Benson. He has a lead into turn three. I know Johnny did not want to give him that lead, but uh, nothing he could do about it. As you mentioned, Ron Hornaday in the preferred line. Now he's opened up about two, three truck lengths. 
Can't forget we've got quite a few Cup drivers that are joining us today. Travis Quapel and David Rudeman starting toward the back of the field because of owner points. How do they get to the front? Well, there's a, there's a, a lot of opportunities to get to the front, Rick, because like we talked in the pre-race, strategy. You can get two tires here. You can even get gas if you want to because the tires just oh, don't. Oh, problems. The 40 gets turned around already. Paul Poulter in the 40, spun around in turn number two. No nope. caution has come out. And Paul gets her going, so it looks like we're going to stay green. Yeah, he did make some contact with the outside wall. Meanwhile, Johnny Benson looks to the inside of Hornaday right at the start-finish line. Oh, Battle for it's the it's lead it. as they went across the start-finish line. It was still Ron Hornaday in front of Johnny Benson. And now Benson has taken over the lead from Hornaday as they go through one and two. Well, the championship fight is joined <laughs> right here. And here comes it's Kyle amazing. Busch. He's on the inside of Hornaday looking for that second spot. Kyle Busch is looking for a championship in another series, but he's looking to continue his winning ways here in the truck series. And side by side, Hornaday able to jump back on the throttle. Kyle couldn't quite get the bottom down on the get the bite down on the bottom of the racetrack. But you got to be impressed with the changes that Trick Bruce and those guys have made to Johnny Benson's truck. He was in the middle of the pack yesterday in practice results, but two laps into the race, he drives around, takes the lead, and is driven away from Ron Hornaday. There's a How couple about? former winners right there, Rick Crawford and Jack Sprague. Right now, they're battling for the eighth position. Eighth and ninth. Rick Crawford, Jack Sprague, now nose to tail again. They were just side by side. We're seeing a lot of side by side all, all the way throughout here. Back through the pack, back in 14th and 15th. Those guys are side by side. Now Colin Brown and Jason White in the 6th and the 15. Colin not quite able to make the pass. Colin leads our Rookie of the Year point standings right now. And Paul Poulter. In the 40, has problems, and we've also had the 10 now of Brendan Gaughan, who has got turned around and made contact, and that brings out our first caution of the day. Brendan's able to drive off, Phil, but the caution flies. You know, Mikey, a lot of guys in the garage area said it would be a while before the racetrack would really come in after that modified race, the NASCAR modified, the Wheel and Modified series ran most of their race prior to prior to our race starting here and they said the racetrack was gonna be pretty slick till they got some of that bias ply rubber off the racetrack. Yeah, and Paul, he didn't know what they're talking about. So what do you mean bias ply? I'm trying, I'm ready. I don't know what, <laughs> but watch, early in the race. We're looking for the 40 of Paul. He looks like he's right by himself. He's right behind the 21 of Looked Kevin like Wood. Maybe he was trying to get under Kevin Wood. That truck hit pretty hard, but he was able to drive away. But that's that's, that's only the first or second lap, Phil, yeah. and that's going to mess up his whole day. There's Brennan. He was on the inside battling the 60 of Terry Cook. Gets turned on, just makes slight contact with the outside wall. Now, that won't mess up his whole day. Brendan, come in, get him some fresh tires, make an adjustment. But, but Paul, Paul has a spoiler all bent. Even though he's getting the Aaron's lucky dog, it's going to be a long day. First Aaron's lucky dog of the day goes to Paul Poulter, so he will get his lap back. The fans have got a good one to watch here. Johnny Benson out front. And welcome back, Camping World RV Rental 200. About to get back underway here at Loud, New Hampshire, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Five laps into it, Brendan Gaughan gets turned around. No contact, though. You know, we saw at the start of the race, Ron Hornaday jumped to the lead. Yep. Start of the race, start he's good at. Can he get it back here, Phil? We go back around Johnny. Oh, Ooh, Johnny, Johnny jumped in the throttle, spun the tires, really seized up the field. And here comes Ron Hornaday. He looks to the inside. It doesn't look as though he's going to be able to take the position away through one and two, but he's not going to give up coming out of two here, side by side with Johnny Benson. Yeah, Ron's got a tough way to go on the bottom of the racetrack. As you can see, he lost the momentum coming up off of two. Johnny really held him down there. You know, he trusted that Ron wouldn't run into him. Pinched him down to the bottom of the racetrack. That's a tough road to hoe, like you said, Bill, but he's trying again on four. Pretty good bite that time coming off oh. four. Side by side, a little contact looks like. A little contact between one and two of the points. And one of they did lead that lap. So, you know, a lot of people make, make a, a big deal out of the way he's able to restart, the way he's able to get through the gears. But you know what I'm more impressed with, Bill? The way he makes the first couple of laps after a restart. He just charges those corners and makes his truck stick. That had nothing to do with gears. Oh. Get through, he gets loose. Yeah, and high. look at Matt Crafton go by for second. Yeah, Kyle Busch had to really be alert that time to keep from running in the back of Ron Hornaday. But like you said, it doesn't have anything to do with gears. Nothing he just, at all. He just jams. He charges for the first few laps. Speaking of charging, Matt Crafton continues to charge. He restarted fourth. Now he's able to get by Kyle Busch. He's looking to take over second for Ron Hornaday. 
Those two continue side by side. Another spin. Mario Gonsolin in the 12 gets turned around in turn number two. Caution flag is out. I was talking to Mario before the race. He said his truck wasn't very good yesterday, but they changed a lot of things. And unfortunately, Mario loops her. And uh, but he does not lose a lot. No, he doesn't. And it doesn't look like any significant damage. You can see on the truck. Let's take let's take a look back at the restart. Remember, we talked about Johnny Benson jumping in the throttle and spinning the tires and that really seizing the field up. But watch this. Watch Johnny's truck wiggle right here. It was actually a little before that that he got sideways just a bit and that allowed Ron Hornaday to get a run on it. But like I said, look, as they go into turn one after after they've all shifted their gears, Johnny had the lead. Watch here. Here we can see the field getting look. Oh. Good job by wow. Todd. Got to be really, really alert on a deal like that. Todd was dead in the throttle, wide open, and all of a sudden have to slam on the brakes. See Hornaday get loose getting in the corner right there, then Kyle Busch was right on the outside. They made just a slight bit of contact. Crafton just tries to clear Hornaday, but not quite able to do it. So Ron second, right on Johnny's bumper. The last time we restarted, we, we watched Ron not be able to get him on yeah. the start, but then passed him after that. And now he's on his bumper again, so Johnny's got to be aware that Ron's going to be all over him. Uh, without a doubt, he knows he's going to be there. So again, Mario Goslin brings out her second caution of the day. We'll be back for the green flag here in Loudon, New Hampshire. Welcome back again under caution for the second time of the day. Mario Goslin had been turned around. Check this out, Phil. You talked about those, that Johnny jumped in the gas and got sideways. Well, you'll do that if you got your wheels off the ground. Ron, Ron hit him in the back, and look, he doesn't let him go. He's all over Johnny, all the way down the front straightaway. And right now, that upset Johnny Benson. Johnny's mad. So and he's going to fight tooth and nail here to try to keep this 33 behind him. Check this out. You said Johnny was mad. You want to see proof of that? Watch Johnny out to the wall, and now he says, move over, buddy. You get over. <laughs> That's not a fair way to race, man. I didn't like it. Well, they're about to go to the second chapter now. It's the green flag back in the air here at Loudon, New Hampshire. And Hornaday. Ron Hornaday again moves to the inside. That's a huge surprise. Yeah. Really. Well, okay, let's give him that one on going through the gears. Yeah. He got in the last one by just driving hard on the first back. But Johnny's not going to have it, is he? Watch him try to fight back on the bottom. Johnny Benson working his way back to the bottom of the racetrack, side by side down the back stretch once again. Hey, uh, Phil, Johnny's mad again, but this time he's mad at himself yeah. for letting Ron do that to him. Matt Crafton back there just watching this battle between these two veterans. Guys, we're 14 laps into the race of 200 laps. <laughs> Can you tell? And they're side by side for the lead and side by side for third. Here comes the 51 of Kyle Busch now. That's a, that shows you how important these guys know each and every point is. Johnny Benson's thinking, I need to get ahead of Ron, lead the most laps, and put five more points on him. Ron's having none of it right now. But Johnny has a faster truck. Adam, what's the 51 saying? fairly quiet this weekend for Kyle Busch and that is surprised because most weekends he's such a perfectionist he talks over and over about the changes he wants to make to get the truck where it needs to be this weekend they've not changed a lot that a bad brand new truck and it's loose on track but good enough he can drive it and gain positions right Adam for Ron Hornaday it's loose all over he said I'd give this a number eight out of the one through ten scale on loose factor but Rick Wren tried to remind him realize that the modifieds have been on the track and once we burn that rubber off this track is going to change so I don't want to over adjust your truck on our first round of pit stops. Look at these battles. For the lead, they're still side by side, door to door, all the way around this mile racetrack. And then for third and fourth, those two have been battling it out. You know, guys, that's what I love about Ron Hornaday. This truck is really loose right now. It is not driving to his liking, and he's up on top of that wheel. Well, you can tell he doesn't, he's not really listening to Rick Grant about the fact that the rubber's gonna burn off because he just says, I'm gonna live with it because I want to lead this race. He's holding Johnny Benson off, trying to try to hold Johnny Benson off. Johnny leads that lap. That time it was Ron Hornaday that oh. led a lap. Oh, I'm sorry I was wrong, Rick. He <laughs> led it by nine thousandths of a second, so. Oh, my goodness. They're battling back and forth. Nobody wanting to give up an inch on this racetrack. Kyle Busch has cleared craft, and he's wanting to join that battle for the lead, I promise you. Adam Alexander, what's going on with Rick Crawford? Well, it's not been great in the early going. The driver who started seventh has dropped back to 13th. The 2005 winner here at New Hampshire saying, 
his truck loose on throttle. And one of the things he mentioned under that last caution to his crew chief, Kevin Cowboy Starlin, I'm gonna move around, see if I can tighten it up. So my question to Phil and Michael, how much flexibility as a driver do you have here at New Hampshire to help your truck without making a pit stop and actually making an adjustment? You got tons of room here, uh, Adam, to move around. You can go up high. That'll sometimes tighten one up. You, if you're if you're pushing a little bit, you can clip that apron. You'll see guys moving all over this racetrack. So that's just a veteran recognizing the circumstances and saying, I'm going to work on my truck myself until we can get on pit road and work on it. This is impressive. I was talking earlier about these cup drivers that were having to start a little bit further back, 18th and 23rd for Travis Quapple and the nine of David Rudeman. Both of them have worked up here into a battle for eight. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, Johnny, by the way, a battle for the lead. Goes back for the lead. <laughs> I think, as you mentioned, Michael, Johnny definitely has a better truck right now, but it's a little bit tough going on the bottom of the racetrack. As you can see, Ron Hornaday squirting out front through the center of the corner, but Johnny's going to fight back on the bottom. Uh, you, you have to understand how difficult. If you're watching at home, what Johnny's doing right now is the hardest thing that anyone's going to do all day long. Run the bottom of the racetrack and not slide up into Hornaday. That truck wants to get loose, Rick. It doesn't have the air pushing on the right side of it. It's wanting to get sideways in the corner, but Johnny's fighting it. He's holding it on the bottom, and he's making progress. And it's a little flatter down there. That's why you don't quite have the bite on the bottom of the racetrack as you do up where Ron Hornaday's running right now. Is Johnny Benson harder on his tires right now than Ron Hornaday? He is, but tires really aren't a factor here. You can abuse them pretty hard. These Goodyears are, are made to take it. What's difficult is keeping that truck off of Ron Hornaday first, and then see how he wants, well, what's, just wants to slide up in there into Hornaday. Almost three wide is he going to do it Kyle Busch looking to the inside of Johnny Benson this is a battle for second now Kyle Busch says I see you trying Johnny I appreciate the effort you ain't going to make it I'm going to have to do it he said I'm going to come and get you but Johnny knows that high groove he knows what John, he knows what Kyle's fixing to get himself into he knows how hard it was down there on the bottom so he's going to say you're welcome to it Kyle give it a try <laughs> he got a pretty good bite off before that time let's see if Kyle is actually going to drive in the corner maybe move up the right oh Johnny fights back on the outside way up high off turn two too high up, up off the of two. That'll take Kyle Busch up to second now, and now the 88 of Matt Crafton tucks in behind the 23. He's in fourth right now. Ooh, Todd got, might have got a little bit loose up off of two. That's the 81 of Donnie Lee and the 60 of Terry Cook. There's a 14 of Rick Crawford. We're hearing that maybe the 30 of Tom O'Dine tangle a little bit. There's the 09 of Travis Quapple, the Zaxby's Ford. Travis on the inside. This is coming off turn two. There's a little contact right there. That got Todd a little bit loose. You could see his left front tire turning the, to save that truck. Just very, very minor contact. Travis was on the inside. I don't even know if they hit. Let's see, Phil. There's a contact oh. right there. You heard Todd get on the throttle. And then he had to got, got back in the throttle after he corralled that truck. But Todd's truck's not that good right now, Phil. He is losing spots. That's 12th and 13th. He's lost several spots early in the going. Rick Crawford, who has a loose truck, we've heard about. He's up on the bottom, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do down on the bottom of the track. And this is the worst possible place for him to be down on the bottom when he loses that air off the side of that truck. That truck on the outside feels like blue when you're down on the inside. You just, your truck wants to jump over into his. See David Starr's to Toyota Onboard running right behind this group. Those two are side by side, and that's for the 12th position. Out in front of the field is Ron Hornaday looking to duplicate what he did a year ago. That was dominate this race. Kyle Bush says, I've got something for you. Race fans, you spent countless laps sitting on your couch hoping your driver will make the chase. Well, now you can experience a chase of your own and take a shot at winning $5,000 plus an additional $1,000 for the last man standing. Log on to speedtv.com now. Keyword Fantasy Cup for the chase for the Fantasy Cup. Early on, we had a couple trucks spinning. The first one was Paul Poulter in the 40. It did bring a caution out, and then Bryn Gaughan got turned around, and we've seen Mario Gosling get turned around. So only two cautions thus far in the race, and we're already on lap 33. You know, we talk about the fact that the modifieds were on this racetrack right before the race. Most of these guys are running their fastest laps within the last five or six laps. Ron Hornaday on his 27th lap, Kyle Busch on his 26th lap. We've just com This will complete 33 laps right here. You know, we talked 15, 20 laps into the race, Rick, that, that Johnny Benson had the best truck. Well, we also heard the crew saying, to, reporting to their driver, just let the rubber burn off. Let that modified rubber burn off. The track will change. I think it's changed, Phil. Johnny Benson is no match for the first two trucks now. Early on, he was the best.
best truck. Yeah, I think right now the 33 and the 51 are, are very evenly matched. They're within about a half a second. Johnny Benson has fallen back to three and a half seconds behind. And he keeps falling further, as does the other top, uh, the rest of the guys in the top ten, right? Michael, you're exactly right. Originally on the radio, we heard everybody saying, loose, loose, and we're loose everywhere. But right now, it has changed to a tightening condition. And that is certainly the case for Dennis Setzer. He is very, very tight. So tight that he has to get off the gas and roll through the corner to make the turn. So he said they need to make some major chassis adjustments on that number 18. How about on your end, Adam? Well, and how about this guy moving to the field? We're talking about Donnie Lee. He started 18th in his first ever race for Randy Moss Motorsports. This is the first of two consecutive races. He'll be in that same truck next week at Las Vegas, but he's moved up nicely here today, 18th to 10th, and I guess you would expect that he's had a ton of modified experience right here at New Hampshire, and he's showing it off here early this afternoon. Wow, what a tight battle there. Mm. 16th and 17th position, Ted Musgrave, and a former winner at this racetrack, Dennis Setzer. Really expected that 18 of Dennis Setzer to be good here. He's so good last week at St. Louis. Yeah. Again, a very you know similar flat racetrack, but uh, I talked to Dennis this morning. He said his truck wasn't quite like what he had last week at St. Louis, but uh, he's fighting up there in the top 20. You know, and, and also, Phil, during practice, his, while his truck didn't handle like he wanted, he was fast, you know? And that's what I like about this team. We've seen a real, uh, up in their performance recently. They can go a lot faster than they could before. He gets that thing dialed in. Still look for him to be a factor today. There's T.J. Bell right there, the seven truck racing with the six of Colin Brown. T.J.'s had some real good runs here lately in this TRG Chevrolet. Colin Brown fought back from an early incident last week at St. Louis for a top 10 finish. I know his guys were really pleased with the effort all around there for them to get that truck patched together and, and the Colin to take that thing up into a top 10 finish. Anytime you're pointed the wrong way on a short track and you're able to, like he was heading in the wrong direction, he got wrecked and he's able to turn around and catch back up, that means you've got a really good truck and uh, the team did a great job on uh, last week in St. Louis for sure. It looks like he's strong again today. Take a look at the five of Mike Skinner just in front of Eric Darnell. He has to check up. Oh, almost contact there with Darnell. He checked up for the 40 of Paul Poulter. Here comes Jack Sprague, that two truck right behind this battle. See them side by side. Skinner's got the, oh, they're going to make it three wide through one. And that doesn't normally work too well on a flat track like this. Look at Skinner all the way down underneath the yellow line off turn two. They're going to stay three wide for a moment. Yeah, they, those guys are all over each other. Jack Sprague is able to make the pass. Now he tries to get on the inside of that 99. Darnell has gotten by the five of Mike Skinner. Jack Sprague still chasing that 99 of Eric Darnell. See, Jack Sprague, as we were talking about, he ran his left side to cross the apron a little bit. It was one of the adjusting tools that a driver can use to, to try to make his truck work better. And the drive, that's why drivers love this track. You've got the apron, and then the, it's flat on the first group, and the track makes another transition. So you can put your truck in any one of those different positions to addr address some of the problems you're having getting around the corners. And, and uh, you watch these guys all day long. They'll be moving around trying to figure out where their truck wants to work. About halfway through a fuel run now as we've completed 41 of the 200 scheduled laps. And it's still Ron Hornaday out front. He's led 29 laps of this race up to this point. The only other driver to be out front has been the 11 or the 23 of Johnny Benson. He led 11 laps. Nobody's looking in the review mirror here at Loudon, New Hampshire. They're all looking forward to the finish of this race. Hey, tickets for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Sprint Cup still available for Martinsville. Special package to include VIP pass to the Q&A dinner with speed personalities. The Martinsville Hospitality Chalet following the Kroger 200 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Race. And that includes, obviously, the guys up here, the guys down on pit road. Crystal will join us. Yeah, looking forward to it. Got a great battle right now on the racetrack. David Rudeman driving that Construct Core. Toyota for Jermaine racing on the inside of Skinner. This is a battle for the seventh spot, and he's got Travis Quapel, the Zaxby's Ford, right behind him. I like how you threw that in there right at the end. Crystal will join us, hoping that people will actually <laughs> come, right? <laughs> we want to make sure people show up. Take a look at that. David Rudeman, Travis Quapel. They've been nose to tail almost since the start of this race. Yeah, Donnie Lee is going to try to join that battle as well. He's in the tenth spot right behind him, as well as the Wilder Toyota of Terry Cook. Now side by side. And that's David Rudeman in the number nine. Mike Skinner on the outside. Rudeman trying to take that position away. 
Man, he would just like a little bit of a break right here from Skinner. He's like, you know I'm faster than you. I'll run you down. I'm inside. Just let me breathe a little bit. But that's not the way it works here in the Truck Series, Phil. No, he's oh, 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 oh. right there. They get into each other. And as they slide sideways, the field tries to get around a lot of smoke. Everybody down on the apron of the racetrack. And it looks as though Skinner's going to be able to keep going. Rudiman still pointed the wrong direction. Sometimes that's how it happens in the truck series here. Yeah, I'm worried. I'm worried about. I thought something was locked up maybe on Rudiman's truck, but he is able to get it turned around and going in the right direction, and he will get out in front of our leader Hornaday, so he will stay on the lead lap. Barely. <laughs> Hornaday was the next truck to go by him. I was a little bit worried about David's gear or transmission there. I thought it looked like it was locked up. When you when he spun, we saw him in the middle of the spin go ahead and cram it in gear right. to try to keep the tires turning to keep going. And, and some uh, damage on that five truck, Mikey e. F. Skinner. Yeah, David was able to avoid the wall. Mike Mike wasn't. David took, uh, got loose on the inside of Skinner and wound up taking them both out. We talked earlier how the truck on the inside wants to go up into the one on the outside, how difficult it is to hold your truck down low. Now think about this for a minute, Rick. David doesn't do this every week. You know, he's, he's new to this truck series. He hadn't raced a truck since they changed the engine rules. And so he was in a situation that maybe was a little bit strange to him, and it got away from him. Let's take a look. See him on the inside as they enter down in turn number three. You see Ruderman gets a little bit loose early on. Now he's going to have to chase that truck up the hill. And he, his right rear corner makes contact with Skinner, turns him around. The disadvantage for Skinner, he's already on the outside of the racetrack, has less room. He makes contact with the outside wall. Skinner was able to turn around. Let's go to pit road and Adam Alexander. And let's talk about the guy that finished third here in 2006 and led 51 laps with much higher expectations today for the guy running second. We're talking about Kyle Busch. The run started loose. It went tight. They're going to make a slight chassis adjustment in the right rear and air pressure. Four tires and fuel for the 51 at lap 50. The Ray Dunn lap. Real tight for Johnny Benson. They're going to go up around on the track bar and make an air pressure adjustment on the left side. For Ron Hornaday, you see no wrenches go in there, but they will make air pressure adjustments to try to help tighten him up on the entry to the corner. Hornaday is done, and he is going to roll away. Looks like he'll be the first guy off pit road. He does win the battle off pit road, Ray. Then comes Matt Crafton and Kyle Busch. Ooh. Maybe too close to call. Our computer's going to give it to Kyle Busch off pit road in looks, second. Looks like Kyle had a little bit in reserve there, and when he got right to the line, he gassed it up a little bit. That's always close when you're talking about pit road speed. It's only 45 miles per hour at this racetrack. Rick Wren doing his notes already. Ron Hornaday leading, but the problem right here for David Ruderman and Mike Skinner going through three and four. Ruderman gets loose, gets into Skinner, and brings out our third caution of the day. Welcome back, Camping World RV Rental 200. You see Bobby Dodder making the hard left turn in the 08. That is because there was just some contact. We were about to go back to green. Bobby Dodder looked like he was trying to get around the outside of the field. Take a look. He was, his, he was our lucky dog. He's a lucky guy up until this point right here. Boom. And I worry about that a lot, Rick. And you have to be aware. Bobby Dodder doesn't race with us all the time. you got to be watching trucks warming up their tires coming for the green. He was on the outside of Matt Crafton and drove into the back of Matt. Yeah, look at the damage on Matt Crafton's truck. And normally your spotter will tell you you've got the lucky dog coming up on the outside. You saw Matt was up against the outside wall, but he was running along there. Bobby Dodder may have, may have come around another truck and not seen Matt until the very end. And then as we were going to break, we were watching the race off of pit road between the 88 and the 51. Take a look at this. This, uh, you know, we talked about these two running side by side down pit road, and I said it looked like Kyle Busch gassed it up at the end. A lot of times drivers will do that. You know, you feel like the speed limit's 45. You were probably running 43 by your tack speed through most of the segment. So right at the end of the segment, you try to jump on the gas a little bit to beat the guy off pit road. But he went too fast exiting, and now he's at the back of the field. And he was on the outside, Mikey. So for him to come around Matt on the outside, that means he definitely was going faster at that point than Matt. NASCAR will give you five miles an hour. It's 45 miles an hour. They'll give you 50. We're hearing he was 50.32. He, he barely missed it. So it was pretty close to a good gamble. Watch, Phil. He's a half a truck behind. Now he's beside. He's thinking the whole time, Matt's not going, Matt's not, Matt's not going fast enough. I'm going to jump him at the end. And he jumped him. And by three-tenths of a mile per hour, he goes to the back. He goes to the back. And, and that that's almost a gamble that's worth taking, Rick, if you think about how close he got to pulling it off. 
Yeah, he was going to come off of pit road second, but now all the way to the back. Adam Alexander. And another guy that's in a similar situation is Jack Sprague. And the tough break for him, an uncontrolled tire. They pitted in the sixth position and actually, actually gained spots on pit road. But the uncontrolled tire going to penalize him and start him outside the top 20. He'll be back there with Kyle Busch. A number of guys going to have to work their way back through the field at a racetrack where track position is going to be a big time challenge. We're getting a report that Timothy Peters in the 17, Paul Poulter in the 40, also going to the back of the pack, as well as the 16 of Brian Scott. We were talking about giving the lucky dog room, and we're hearing that, that Brian Scott was asked by NASCAR not to warm up his tires and, and clean off his tires a couple times, and he did that, and NASCAR was going to put him to the back now because he did not leave room for the Aaron's lucky dog. So a few trucks making their way to the back of the field now because NASCAR is sending them back there. And then we see the damage on the back of the five of Mike Skinner. And Rick, this is the third time that Skinner has come to pit road to try to repair that damage. He called up to his spotter, Mike Swain, and said, go over and find the number nine spotter and pass some information along to David Rudeman. Tell him he better tighten his belts up because I'm going to come find him. Adam? And for Matt Crafton, there's been a lot of talk on the radio about the damage they may have received when he got into the 08 on track. They said it flared out the fender. It did not knock it in on the tire. They feel like everything is okay. And that's good news for Crafton, who will restart in the third position. And a number of guys using this opportunity to come in and top off the fuel tank because they don't have any track position starting much deeper in the field on this restart. Yeah, you know, this, this caution came out on around lap 50, or all the leaders came down pit road on lap number 50. We know that the pit window was somewhere around 75 to 80 laps, so a lot of these guys feel like, you know, they may need to come in, get a little extra fuel. Some of these guys maybe could only go 70 or 72 laps, so that's the reason that some of these guys are topping off right now. They continue to clean the racetrack up. We'll be back for the green flag here on Speed. And welcome back. Wrecked life in the crash lane. Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Obviously a exciting show there from the Chicago family of tours. And we're still under caution, about to get back underway here at Loudon, New Hampshire. You know, we're getting ready for that restart. And when Bobby Dodder went, was going to try to catch up to the field, pass the leader, catch up to the field to get to Aaron's lucky dog, and he ran in the back of Matt Crafton. He obviously busted his oil cooler because that's what's created the need for all this speedy dry, this speed zorb that they put down on the racetrack, and that's why we've delayed the restart here so many, so many laps. But they've the about, they're Crafton got. Right, and they're blowing off turn three now. They, they vacuumed up most of the speed dry, so they got the track in really good shape. We should be ready to go in another lap or two, but, uh, you know, Phil, when you, when you get, that, that's what I like to remind people, uh, fans, caution flags, you, it's not a break. Yeah. You still got to think. It's not a rust period. No, you still got to think. Every, when you come to pit road, you got seven, eight guys that are going to service that car that have worked all week long. Hey, who's that? How about that fan? <laughs> Check pretty good, out. Pretty good seats for this race, don't you think? He owns this place, man. He can sit anywhere he wants. Look where he picked. Front row. Yeah, he's in the front row, right by the flag stand. How about that? Bruton Smith right here enjoying a truck race. Man, I was over at the new Z-Max Speedway this past week. The Napa Camry was making a launch, racing yeah. against old Ron Caps, racing down that track. You wouldn't believe it. It's so cool, that drag strip. And the, the, the NHR is over there this weekend. Yep, getting underway. Take a look at this. Kyle Busch coming off of pit road. Adam, what's going on? And that was a simple move of top off the fuel tank. They felt like they didn't have any track position, give up a couple of spots, come down pit road, and then at least they're plus eight on laps as far as fuel is concerned. Should we have a long green flag run? And when you look at the history of New Hampshire, that can happen quite a bit. So perhaps the misfortune of speeding on the pit lane can help them out in the long run here. Well, that's what Kyle's hoping. You know, when you make a mistake, you like to mix up your game a little bit and hopefully take advantage of a bad situation. Green flag back in the air. It's still Ron Hornaday in front of now Matt Crafton, who has that little bit of, I guess it would be an aerodynamic advantage right now to his 88 Chevrolet. Well, I like the way that fender's flared out, Phil. It's giving him some side force on that truck. If you could build one on purpose like that, you would. So I don't think NASCAR would like it. No. But nonetheless, if it can if it can stay like that, that's not going to hurt. I mean, we, as we see Eric Darnell try to make a run on the 23 of Johnny Benson, 
You know, and Matt Crafton still thinks he can win this championship. 199 points out when the race started. Certainly within reason to think that he could catch these two. He's only 100 and some points out of second. So he knows he's a part of this battle. Look at this three-wide battle right in front of the 51 of Kyle Busch. That's Jack Sprague, the two on the inside. Brian Scott, the 16 in the middle. Kevin Wood, the 21 on the outside. There's Kyle. So I know you're three wide. Give me a little. Oh, we got a battle for the lead. Matt Crafton. Matt wow. Crafton charges in front of the 33 of Ron Horn and a Crafton in front of the field here at New Hampshire. He drove, he drove around him aggressively and grabbed the lead. Derek Darnell grabs third place from Johnny Benson. Now here comes Rick Crawford trying to take over fourth from JB. Johnny Benson on the outside of the 14, and it's Crawford taking it away from Johnny Benson. Now Benson back to the inside as that battle continues. Take a look back at what happened between Darnell and Johnny Benson on the right. Johnny got real loose on the inside. Look how, look how sideways he is right there as Eric Darnell goes by on the outside. That's what allowed Rick Crawford to get up beside of Johnny Benson. Now here comes David Starr battling. David Starr has to check up. Rick Crawford just in front. What a loose race truck. It looks like Crawford is battling with in that number 14. Well, and Johnny's down on the bottom of the track, and he just couldn't keep it off with the gug out on the outside of him. He, he drives into turn one a little more tentatively, Phil, making sure he stays off Crawford, then gasses it up early and drives right up by side, but back beside him again. Adam Alexander, what's going on with that 14 team? Well, you can see him racing side by side with Johnny Benson, how difficult it is to pass here at New Hampshire, and with that, it's much better to pick up positions on pit road, and Rick Crawford's guys were able to do that for him. It was a four-tire stop at lap 50. They have made his truck better. We'll see how it goes over the long haul as Benson's able to get around, and David Starr looking to open the door as well. Yeah, Adam, he got real loose. That's what allowed Johnny Benson to get by him, and David Starr to pull right up behind him. Now David's going to look to the inside. Not quite able to do anything that time. Again, out in front, Matt Crafton, Ron Hornaday, Eric Darnell, Johnny Benson, Rick Crawford. They're your top five. David Starr, Todd Bodine, Terry Cook, Travis Guapel, and Donnie Leah, your top ten. Take a look at this. Brian Scott and Kyle Busch battling it back here in the field. Yeah, Kyle right now is being shown in the 21st position, battling that 16 of Brian Scott. There's the 15 of Jason White, the Gunbroker.com Toyota this week. That's his teammate on the inside. Kyle's Billy Blue play. owns those two trucks. Kyle's going to try to take over that spot. Jason's going to fight back on the outside. Down the back stretch, those two trucks go, continuing to run door to door. Now, Kyle Busch with the advantage. Here comes Brian Scott to the inside. This battle continues. Wow, Crawford's been able to drive back up beside Johnny Benson, Phil. It's as good as that truck looked for Johnny Benson at the start of the race. It looked like once we got that Hoosier rubber burn off, his truck is not nearly as good as it was at the beginning. We saw him fall about three and a half, four seconds behind our leader, Ron Hornday, before the caution flag. Kyle Busch on the right has caught David Rudeman trying to get around Rudeman for a spot inside the top 20. Kyle Strong down into the turn. David's thinking, be careful down there. It's slick. It's really <laughs> slick. Now you can get loose down there on the bottom. Goes so well. Here comes Ron Hornaday once again. Look to the inside of Matt Crafton. Crafton drives away as they go out of two. See, Ron Hornaday had to drive in the corner so much straighter than Matt Crafton did. Matt had a real nice arc getting in that corner, and look at the gap he opened up. Wow. Big I mean, they run. were side to side going into turn one, and he opened up a half a straightaway almost. What a run Crafton had coming out of two. Let's see if Hornaday can get the same type. Or almost into the wall as they come out of four, and now he's all over the back bumper of Crafton. Going to jump to the inside again. Let's see what he can do with him. Matt's got that nice arc on the outside of the racetrack. Looks like Matt's truck's pushing a little bit. He can't quite get it to turn in the corner. Ron's able to get down a whole lot lower get more grip in his truck and make that turn a little bit shorter. He'll get, I think he'll get Crafton in this turn. He's been way better than Matt down in three and four. You know, like at the very beginning of the show, we talk about Hornaday and Johnny Benson in this championship battle. Well, maybe we forgot about this 88 <laughs> truck right here. Maybe he has something to say about that. Let's not forget about third place Matt Crafton. That's exactly what everybody's probably thinking right now. Well, Matt Crafton's out of it. He's 199 points back. You have a slip up by the 33 and the 23. He is right back in contention. We have this race were to end right now. He would make a good game on Johnny Benson. Johnny's back in the fourth spot. It means he gains about 20 some points and puts him about 100 and 174 you can see there <laughs> you guys are all over the map aren't you <laughs> we like the map 
Matt Matheson. Crafton trying to hold off. Here comes Hornaday once again. Throws it down into turn number one, and he takes that top spot back. That's just a smart move by Crafton there. He's going to waste both their times by holding him down there. What was going to happen inevitably was Hornaday was going to pass him, and Matt realized that, gave up the spot, and gained spots from third on back. You know, they gained ground on everybody behind them. Would you, would you believe that Matt Crafton that time was passed by Ron Hornaday after they completed that lap, and that was his fastest lap of the race prior to Ron Hornaday passing him? That's a, that's a little bit discouraging <laughs> when, you, when you find out the best lap of the race. Well, how'd that guy go around me then? He went right on by him. Ron Hornaday back in front of the field. Crafton runs second. Darnell, Benson, and Crawford, your top five. Sunday on Wind Tunnel, Dave and his guests pontificate on the current state of motorsports, whether it's in the pits, on the track, or in the corporate office. To so get your opinion heard by picking up the phone or pounding out the email. Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain live Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Dario Franchitti is the guest there. Dave's passionate about that show. He's about passionate about that <laughs> Passionate. Dario Franchitti going back to the IndyCar Series next year full-time. We want to look back through our top 10. We're going to do a top 10 drop back, beginning with Ray Dunlap. Well, let's start with Ron Hornaday. You know, these guys brought the same truck that they had at St. Louis. It's a brand new chassis, number 27. And Hornaday said he's so proud about how these guys joined together to put a big, strong effort to bring that truck, get it turned around in the truck, and ready to come to New Hampshire. Adam? You guys have talked upstairs about how impressive Matt Crafton has been today after starting third and maintaining that position in the top five. He complained about having a tight truck on the first run of the day, pitted at lap 50. Solid stop by the guys. Air pressure is what they did to help loosen up the truck, but they didn't do it enough. He just said on the radio, still too tight in three and four. That's where I'm losing ground. Anticipate more changes on the 88 when they come down pit road once more. Right? And Adam, that's really about the same thing for the number 99 of Eric Darnell. He's very tight in the centers. They make quite a bit of adjustments on that first round of pit stops. Now, they come into this race seventh in points, about 300 out. But the real thing for them, Eric Darnell believes their team is good enough to get into the top five. And that's their goal as we go through these final eight races of the season, make the top five in the championship chase. Now, for 23, Johnny Benson, he came on the radio and said the track is getting slipperier. Then his crew chief, Trip Drew, said, I'm not sure that's proper English. Johnny said, I'm not sure about that either. But what I do know is we don't have anything for him on the straightaways. We're killing him in the corners, but we need more horsepower. Adam? You want a dark horse in today's race for the second half? How about the guy riding fifth right now, Rick Crawford? He's won here before. And what I like about this race team is they have shown patience here today. Very, very loose on that first run. They made an adjustment on their stop at lap 50. Four tires and fuel, picked up a couple of positions and now he finds himself riding fifth and right where he needs to be to make a run in the latter half of today's race, right? Well, after St. Louis, Todd Bodine's team took this truck they have to Motor Mile Speedway in Radford, Virginia, and did some testing. They put a new rear end in the truck thinking that it would be better, but Todd said it was so loose coming off the corners that he just couldn't drive it. So in the last part of yesterday's afternoon, they decided to change that rear end back. They've got it set up just the way it was at St. Louis. Adam? You talk about a yo-yo. Travis Quapple started the day loose. It went tight late in that first run, so they made an adjustment to help the handling on their first pit stop. The restart had Travis in the seventh position. He said we're way, way, way loose, but perhaps that's a good thing for the long run because he's rallied back up to seventh and looking for more at lap 81, right? Hard to believe, Adam, that it's been 63 races since David Starr last won, but he said he's really feeling good about the way things are starting to go with his new crew chief, Rick Gay. He said you got to give that two or three races for them to get their communication down and have everything just the way they want it, but he feels like Red Horse Racing is going in the right direction. Adam? Today's race, a little bit of an experiment for the guys at the 81 bunch. Randy Moss Motorsports has Donnie Lee in the truck for the first of two races. He'll be back in next week at Las Vegas. They just want to make sure everyone gets along and this is the right fit. Well, if today is any, any indication, easy for me to say, they could be together for a long time to come. Lee is starting outside the top 15 today. He's rallied into the top 10. They made no adjustments on their first stop earlier today, right? And Adam, Donnie Lee and Colin Brown have had a pretty good battle throughout the year in the Ray Bestest Rookie of the Rear Challenge. 
but Colin Brown is leading him by about 20 points because Colin has been the top rookie in five different races. He said that is their big goal for the remainder of this season. Get that rookie of the year. They know that Conway is coming back next year. This is a continual learning process for Colin Brown and his crew chief, Mike Beam, to try to make this team better. But their number one goal, win rookie of the year. Thank you, Adam Alexander, Ray Dunlap, for bringing us through the top ten. We saw on the right side of our screen when it took place, Eric Darnell was able to make the pass on Matt Crafton, so he took second away from Crafton. Darnell moves up to the second spot. Crafton drops back to third. Talking about a truck on the move, we, we know Kyle Busch started last. He didn't stay there long. He's all the way up to 13th. And, Phil, I'm looking at the lap speeds. The last time by, Ron Hornadale, our leader, ran about a 31 flat. The truck that is running 18th ran a 30-90. The 18th place truck ran faster than our leader and, and, and the leader didn't have any traffic. That just goes to show you the importance of track position, how these crews are gonna be able to get their guys off pit road better than the others could dictate how this race is won. Look at this battle right here. Third, fourth, and fifth. Matt Kraft in the 88, Johnny Benson the 23, and Rick Crawford the 14 down on the bottom. You know the guys in the garage here we were talking about with this new restriction this year at Loudon with the new tapered spacer, that drafting has become way more critical now than it has been in the past. Well, we see these big old bricks for trucks drafting really well on the on the two-mile super speedways, but these straightaways, Phil, are so long, you can really pull up on a guy that's ahead of you because of the, the restrictions that the engines have. Look at those guys side by side and right behind you. This is Ty Bodine, his lumber liquidators on board right here, and there's Travis Quapple. They were side by side right behind that other side by side battle for position. <laughs> side by side, door to door, all over the racetrack right now. The only guy that hasn't had anybody get beside him for quite a while is our race leader, Ron Hornaday. Now he has over a three-second lead over second place Eric Darnell. But this battle continues here three wide now as they come out of the turn. Wasn't Crawford on the inside just a little while ago, Johnny Benson? Wow, J.C. Stout said, what are you boys thinking? <laughs> Why are you in such a hurry? I'll get out of the way. I'm I sorry. I am going to get out of the way of what's about to take place here. Crawford gets by the 23 of Johnny Benson as well. So Rick Crawford and Travis Quapple both getting by that 23, that 51, still on the move back in 13th, Adam. And how does a driver gauge where he is in relation to his competition? Well, he can see the guys around him, but right now Kyle Busch too far back to know where he is in relation to the leaders. So he's getting it in way of lap times. And they just told him on the radio, you're running somewhere in the 30, 80, 30, 90 range. That's in seconds. Other guys are running 31 plus. You're gaining ground, keep going. And he's doing this in a brand new race truck. They've not raced this one. They shook it down at Bristol. And when they did so, Kyle said this truck better than the one, excuse me, they, they shook it down at Richmond, and he said it's better than the truck he won with a couple of weeks ago at Bristol. He's confident right now, Ray. Ron Hornaday pretty confident also, Adam. His crew chief, Rick Wren, just came on the radio moments ago and said, I need you to tell me exactly when the truck starts to get tight because I want to be able to analyze the changes we made back on lap 50. Remember, Hornaday had been saying that he was loose everywhere, so they made air pressure adjustments. Wren trying to learn about that a little bit. Hornaday said he just added three quarters of a round of break to the rear. And that's why that team right there is so successful. You've got Rick Wren asking for very detailed feedback. And you know what I bet he told him also? He said, run me a couple hard laps here. I want to see what this truck has. Ron ran down in the 30-70s, so he's got a strong ride. A flat race track and a synchronized spin brought out the caution. After the pit stops, we're back to green flag racing. Summer officially comes to an end next week. So what will that mean for Johnny Benson's summer hot streak? JB's quest for his first Truck Series championship continues from Las Vegas with last year's champ less than 100 points back. Catch all the action next Saturday with the setup at 9, followed by Racing Under the Lights live from Sin City, only on speed. Be there. Again next week, that's a week from today, a Saturday race for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series 8.30 with Chris DeBota in the setup, 9 o'clock, green flag flies. Welcome back to the Camping World RV Rental 200, only fitting that the Camping World RV sales number 33 of Ron Hornaday continues to lead. He's led 82 laps already of this race. Yeah, but don't look now. That 99 truck of Eric Darnell is a fast truck. He just ran his fastest lap of the race a lap and a half ago, and he is catching that 33 of Ron Hornaday. Yeah, it'll be time for Ron to step on it again. You know, we, we saw him run anywhere from a 3070 
two up in the 31 teens with clear track. I think he's saving some truck there, Phil, but he's going to need it because Eric Darnell is indeed on his way to the front. Now the truck that has been following Eric Darnell and closing the gap on him has been that 0-9 of Travis Quapple. So Travis Quapple trying to stay together with the other Ford in front of him. Rick Crawford rounding out three Fords in a row, running second, third, and fourth. Well, you know, Rick, uh, Phil talked about the fact that uh, Darnell ran his fastest lap a lap and a half ago. Um, Travis just ran faster than that. He was the <laughs> fastest truck on the track by over a tenth of a second last time by. So Travis has got that thing wound up. Adam Alexander. What, what's amazing about what Travis Quapple's doing today is he's not been in a truck since Dover. He's had quite a layoff sharing time in this machine with Bobby East and also John West Townley. But he has come back with a resounding yes. He, he really knows what it takes to make this thing go. They started 19th, worked their way into the top 10 on the first run. And if you remember, he was very, very loose at the start of this run, but that's the way they wanted it. It has come to him, and right now he is running the fastest laps on track, right? And Adam, Eric Darnell was incredibly tight before we pitted that first round. I asked his crew chief, Matt Pusha, what did you do? He said, we did everything, track bar, wedge. We also changed air pressure adjustment. He said, but whatever we did, Eric really liked it. He said, before he wasn't able to roll through the corner at all and very, very tight off. Now he's not complaining at all about the chassis. Closing in a little bit on Hornaday right now as Hornaday gets in a little bit of lap traffic. What do you guys think? It takes about 50 to 54 laps for these trucks to come in? <laughs> it's amazing. Both of these guys, Eric Darnell and Travis Quapple, within the last two laps, have lowered their fastest time of the race. Yeah, and there's another guy, Rick Crawford, who just did it get, did it himself. He just ran a 30-77. <laughs> so uh, this is a testament to the, to the quality of this tire these guys are racing on. You can abuse it. You can lay all over it, but it's still there for you. And Goodyear just does a great job building these Wrangler radials for these trucks. You know, we documented Kyle Busch move making his way all the way up to 13th a little while ago. Well, he stalled out right there at 13. So Richie Waters may be looking at, at possibly two tires to try to get him some of that track position back because Kyle has only been able to make up his way up to the 13 spot and then his progress has stalled. The wheels, uh, th those crew chiefs wheels are turning down there right now. They're seeing the fact, Rick, that it took these guys some 40 or 50 laps to run these fast times, trying to figure out how they're going to get on pit road, how they can get some track position. We talked about the fact that the first 20 trucks are capable of running basically right. the same time, so they're going to have to make something happen if they want to get to victory lane, especially with this this truck here. We know it's fast enough to get to victory lane, but he doesn't have the track position to do it. And we talk about a two-tire stop. That means that his left side tires would have to last 150 laps. Is that possible? I wouldn't put it past him. I think it's, ex I think it's exactly possible. But the thing that we have to look at, Bill, if the caution comes out in about 10 or 15 laps, that's going to mean there's 75, 80 laps to go prior to the end of the race. That's a whole fuel run. That's a whole stop. These tires would be perfect about the, about the end of that run. So maybe two tires would be a stretch to go that far. But if I don't have track position, I got to try something. You got to try something because right now Kyle Busch is mired back in the 13th spot. He has a lot of good trucks in front of him and his forward progress is stalled. We talk about the pit window being around 75, 80 laps, something like that. We're actually coming into about 15 to 20 laps from everyone having to come back down onto pit road. Oh, yeah, we could very well see green flag pit stops here, and that's when it really shuffles the field up because what is a, what is a little bit of a, of a two, three-second miscue on pit road really shows up on the racetrack. Right now, we've got 1.6 seconds separating one and two. Adam Alexander. One driver we've talked about a lot in the last few weeks is the guy you see on screen right now, Ted Musgrave. This team struggled in the early going today, but they have rallied back nicely. Currently riding in the 11th position, a top 10 for Musgrave today would be his fourth in a row. And that is very solid for a team that has had so many ups and downs in the first half of this season. Yeah, that would be a nice run. Look, nice little three race run for Ted Musgrave, but as Adam said, with all top 10 finishes, and I know Team ASC is is going away at the end of the season, so it would be great to see them off with a, a great finish to the 2008 season. This is a guy that's got, what, just a, just a, gave up a lot of track position earlier in the race, was in the back of the pack, and he's been able to slice his way up through the field just like Kyle Busch. This, this, this truck of Jack Spraggs is just as good as Kyle Busch's, and so uh, these guys, again, on pit road are trying to figure out how to overcome the loss of the track position. How about 60% of the time when he starts this race, 
He's in the top 10. Jack Sprague. That's a pretty good percentage, especially if you're talking baseball. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, if you can hit 600 in baseball, you can make a lot of money. You're doing pretty well. Donnie Lee in that 81 this week, just in front of the six of Colin Brown. But it's the 33 of Ron Hornaday that the field continues to chase. Rick Wren hoping they make the right changes on the final stop. Tomorrow on Speed, go beyond the highlights and beyond the stats as Speed connects you to the world of motorsports like you've never experienced before. The Speed Report, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. I'm guessing we're probably, oh, 10, 15 laps away from green flag pit stops as we take a look at our race summary ron hornaday will clinch and has clinched the most laps led now we've had three cautions for 16 laps only three drivers have been out front it's been ron hornaday the 23 of johnny benson and the 88 of matt crafton a lot of these guys in the pit so they can run 75 to 80 laps still so we're going to find out if they're pulling our leg or not and we had a few caution laps now because remember when bobby dada ran in the back of matt crafton that created a few extra caution laps that will give them a little bit more cushion but you know, we've run 70 laps since most of the lead lap trucks have been on pit road. So we're, I think we're within about 10 laps, aren't we, Adam? Yeah, I just talked to Chad Norris, crew chief for Travis Quapel, and he said their lap number, 130, 10 laps from right now. So I would say in the next 10, 12 laps, maybe earlier for some teams, we will see these guys on pit road in a green flag condition. Good battle for second brewing right here. Eric Darnell has the second spot in the 99 truck. Travis Quapel has been able to run him down. Travis ran his fastest lap of the race, lowered it again about seven laps ago, and looks to the inside of Eric for second. Well, it looks like he's got a good run off turn two on Eric. And these trucks are two seconds behind our race leader, Ron Hornaday. So now Travis Quapel makes that pass, gets by Eric Darnell, takes over second. We're gonna go see if he can find him some Chevy blood up there in the front. They have uh, a little over two seconds to a race where you can get to Hornaday. What about this battle? Remember that comment earlier we heard from Skinner? Do you about think Rudy? You think Rudy's pulling his belts tight right now? He looks in the mirror. I hope Skinner doesn't do anything wrong here. Yeah, you know another thing we have to consider when we're talking about green flag pit stops. These guys are really going to have to pack those things full of fuel because they're going to stop with about 70 laps to go. Right. So I think that may be a time when they might want to put four tires on because there's no sense putting two tires on in six seconds or seven seconds and having to wait on the fuel till you run about 12 seconds so just a couple more seconds will give you four tires in this situation here rick rudiman uh mike's had enough time to pull off by now since he's caught rudiman but mike david doesn't want to rekindle the flame what do you mean he's had enough time to cool off guys carry this stuff for races well he's fine right now but if david cuts him off a couple times he'll say i'll be darned don't yeah, you remember what yeah. happened a minute ago i think i remember something earlier in this race it may be a good move on david's part just when mike skinner gets there just to kind of give him one side or the other in a lot of extra room you see johnny benson behind that 30 on the left side of our screen. Ray, what's going on with Johnny? Well, guys, you remember on lap 50, I told you that he was really tight. They took some air pressure out of the left rear and they raised the track bar one round. Now, when you raise the track bar, it automatically should loosen the truck up. But what Johnny said was it didn't make enough of a difference and it didn't help him rotate through the corner. He liked it better where they had the track bar located. So on this round of pit stops, they plan on putting that thing back down and trying to do something else to help loosen him up. That's what's interesting about these trucks you see here, Kyle Busch and Jack Sprague. Jack's actually run Kyle down and drove up on the inside of him. And look at Jack down on the bottom, Phil. Yeah, this is 13th and 14th. Remember, Kyle's not been able to progress past 13th. Here's Johnny Benson on pit road right now. Ray Dunlap. As I told you, they're going to change that track bar back and make air pressure adjustments for JB. I wasn't able to hear Trip when he told the crew whether or not there'll be a wedge adjustment here or not. But we'll see as his crew goes to work. All the guys going over to the right side, that's Brian Cable and Chris Taylor changing tires for the number 23. Expect Hornaday down in the next two or three laps. His crew is also getting up on the wall. Yeah, Johnny Benson right now would, would just have a heart attack if the caution were to come out because he would be one lap down right now. Just think of the championship implications 
uh, when you pit before the home field. You know, he was the right. first scout hero, and he's our championship leader. Here comes the 33 of Ron Hornaday, the other championship contender on pit road. Now he feels better. <laughs> he's okay, that was a good idea. The, the spotter called him and said, okay, leader's in, and Johnny said, oh, good. Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick Wren just came on the radio and said four tires and fuel and no adjustments. We'll see if they do anything here. No wedges or track bar wrenches in any of the crew members' hands. So apparently they're just going to put tires on this Camping World Chevrolet. Right side is done for these guys. Donald Caldwell and Shane Raven changing tires. Nice smooth stop so far. Everything going fine for Hornaday. Pack that thing full of fuel. They reminded Krieger. And here he goes down pit road. And you don't want to speed. No, you don't want to speed. And again, because it's green flag pit stops, you have to fill it full of fuel. You might as well go ahead and pull put four tires on. We've seen Johnny and Ron do that. We've got Donnie Leah right now giving up a top 10 spot to come down pit road. Donnie Leah makes his way onto pit road. We've got other drivers now making the hard left turn and moving on to pit road. Brian Scott also brings his number 16 onto pit road. You see TJ Bell getting out of his pit stall and back onto pit road and back onto the track. Jack Sprague, Mike Skinner, and Kyle Busch are three trucks, Rick, that pitted after the majority of the field did on lap 50. So we're looking at seven or eight laps more that Kyle Busch can run, and these guys will be looking for that caution flag at this point, huh, Phil? Absolutely. They would love to put some of these trucks a lap down. That'll help your track position in a hurry. If you can stay on the, on the racetrack and the caution flies when most of the other guys have pitted, you're going to trap a lot of guys a lap down. X-ray. We just saw the number 81 of Donnie Leah come down pit road. Also the 16 of Brian Scott. He gave up 16th position on the racetrack. And here comes Rudiman in the number nine. These guys are going to go to work there. He's going to try to loosen this truck up a little bit for David Rudiman. Now let's go to Adam Alexander. Let's talk about the 88 of Matt Crafton giving up a position in the top five to come to pit road. This stop at lap 130. It's going to be a four-tire stop for him, a slight adjustment. He continues to say he is tight, and as he makes his stop, the 09 of Travis Quaffle gives up the lead. He will make what could be his final stop of the day. He is well within his window to go the distance with 70 laps to go. They came on the radio three laps ago and said, what do you need? He said, not much. It's really good. Four tires going on. Second can of fuel is in. Travis Wapple away. What a run it's been for him. A great stop for that team. Yeah, a long way down pit road. As you mentioned, it would be just horrible to get busted for speeding, especially on a green flag pit stop. You know, and if you're a team at the at the back half of the top 20, just barely on the lead lap, maybe two tires and a can of gas is, is a gamble you might be willing to take right now. Now, obviously, if the green flag stays out for an extended period of time, that'll bite you. But it might keep you on the lead lap and get you a good finish that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Adam Alexander. Lap 132 for Rick Crawford. Chassis adjustment in the right rear. It will be four tires and the all-important two cans of fuel. Ray Dunlap. It'll be a track bar adjustment for the number 99 of Eric Darnell. They reminded him 4,800 in second gear. That's how you don't get caught speeding. A little bit of a hang up on the left rear there. Darnell will get plenty of fuel in his northern tool Ford, and he's back to the racetrack. So Eric Darnell makes his way off of pit road. The 30 of Todd Bodine is the race leader. And his lumber liquidators. It looked like Eric Darnell was able to get back out on the racetrack in front of Todd Bodine, so that will keep him on the lead lap. Ron Hornaday, Travis Quaffle, both of those trucks right now in front of Todd Bodine, our leader, so they are on the lead lap. Only 67 laps to go. We see Todd Bodine now making his way onto pit road. Ted Musgrave following Bodine onto pit road. A couple of the guys that had stayed out had wound up in the top five. Adam Alexander. And here comes Ted Musgrave in. In fact, he's already on the pit lane. Right side service is complete, and this is big for this race team. The reason why, a solid top 10. You don't want to throw it away on pit road. Ted Musgrave pulls away at lap 134. May have been right side tires only for him, Ray. What's really interesting about Tom Bodine, on the first run, he was really tight in the center. They made a track bar adjustment. Then he was tight middle off. But right at the end of this last run, his truck got really, really loose. So he said, there's no way you can loosen me up anymore. So they had 
to tighten his truck up a little bit. Strange how the things change throughout the course of the race. We see a track bar adjustment on the Conway Ford for Colin Brown, his crew going to work. He will have uh, pitted on lap 135. Also see Skinner coming down pit road. This should be the last round up for all these guys to make it to pit road if we go green the rest of the way. David Starr has been scored as race leader. Terry Cook just behind him. One and two on the scoring monitor. Remember Kyle Busch pitted eight laps later than most of the other trucks on the lead lap, so he has a little bit of cushion right now. That's good and bad though, Phil. You can run a few laps and maybe get a caution, but you're running slower. You're on those older tires. You're running slower. Kyle dives on the pit road here at lap 136. David Starr also on pit road. Yeah, Matt Kraft and Donnie Lee have both ran their fastest lap of the race here within the last two or three laps, Ray. Number 11, David Starr coming in. You see new sponsorship on the hood from K&N Builders. That's good news for Red Horse Racing. He was tight center off. They went up two rounds on the track bar last time. Only going to do a half a round on his number 11 truck this time to try to help loosen that truck up just a little bit more for the final run. Double A. And remember on that last caution, lap 58, Kyle Busch came down and topped off, hoping it would help. Well, he was able to stay out to lap 137. Unfortunately, he did not get a caution, so he will cycle back out. Out, running outside the top 10, four tires and fuel for Bush on what could be his final stop. And as you can see, Terry Cook, a former winner here at New Hampshire, coming in as well. His green flag service at lap 138, a chassis adjustment, four tires and fuel for the 60. And as the green flag pit stops continue to shake out, Travis Quapple in front of the field, Ron Hornaday behind him, 2.7 seconds back. Eric Darnell runs third, Rick Crawford is fourth, Johnny Benson in the top five. Hey, that's the difference in these green flag pit stops. We saw Ron Hornaday come in with about a two second lead. Travis Quapple now, after all the pit cycles done, has a 2.7 second lead over Ron Hornaday. So somewhere in there, Travis Quapple gained almost five seconds. There you see the difference. Travis Quapple leading Ron Hornaday. Ron Hornaday still in contention to take away some of those points Johnny Benson had as a lead in this championship run. It's time to test your truck series knowledge with the Aaron's Lucky Guess Trivia Question. There are nine brothers who have NASCAR wins at multiple racetracks. Can you name the family with the most wins? And I've got two brothers up here, of obviously huh. racing legends, and you guys have added your names, obviously, to the winner's list. Do you have any ideas? You can't say it. Well, I guess you can say it. I have, I've got an idea. I have thought. Okay. <laughs> we know you have the hottest now, now, is this in the history of NASCAR? Is this, is, this is in your top three series. Okay. I've, the, the brothers that have the most wins at a track. At a track. Hmm. We've got Travis Quapple in front of the field. That's David Rudeman that is a lap down just in front of Travis Quapple. Those two just put Michael and Ned a lap down. He's in the 18th spot, so he'll be looking for Aaron's to answer his... Uh, questions of when we're going to see a caution to get him a lucky lucky pass. We'd like to have one pretty soon. That's all the way back to second. Ron Hornaday holding on to that position. Eric Darnell running third. Then it's Rick Crawford in fourth. And Johnny Benson, our championship points leader in the fifth spot. Yeah, Ron now finds himself over four seconds behind our leader, Travis Quarter. How does how the complexion of this race change with one <laughs> set of green flag pit stops? I mean, Evidently, Travis Popple got in and off of pit road. I mean, it was a combination of entry, exit, and the team and doing the their pit stop. And the pit stop as exactly. well. Yeah. Excellent job by Travis Popple's group in that 0-9. Looking for another win. He had a win back in 2004 in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series at this racetrack. But look, at the, this is your 17th place truck. He's been all over him for 10 laps. He can't do anything with him. And we talked about maybe getting two tires. I think David Rudman, Kyle Busch, some of these guys should have indeed done that. Ted Musgrave is one that I saw take advantage of that strategy. He was 17th or 18th at the back of the lead lap trucks. He is now running in the ninth spot, got two tires, and I'm watching him run some of his fastest laps of the day as well. Yeah, moved into the ninth spot just now, got by Donnie Leah on this last lap. There's a battle right there. There's Donnie Leah, David Starr, and Jack Sprague. That's 10th, 11th, and 12th. And there's Musgrave, who just passed Donnie Leah for that ninth spot in the 59 truck. So by the 10 of Brendan gone. Brendan's being shown one lap down right now. In the back, we saw 
Jones, hit 11, 12, Donnie Lee, David Starr, Jack Sprague, Kyle Busch still holding on to that 13th position now. Yeah, he has absolutely stalled out in 13th. He's been running in the 13th spot probably for 30 laps prior to the pit stop, and now you know, 10 laps past the pit stop. Here comes David Starr making the pass on Donnie Lee. I remember back at Mansfield. <laughs> Well, they Donnie Lee made the pass on David Starr, used a little bumper to do it. They, they had some issues there on the front straightaway here at Loudon, not, not quite close. Oh, oh, problem! Yeah. Donnie Lee gets turned around, David Starr right there. Well, they, they didn't have it worked out on the I front straightaway, Rick. It was, there was some stuff going on there, it didn't look sanitary, and Donnie Lee winds up in the outside wall. And so our fourth caution of the day comes out, it will bring the field all back together. Travis Quapple had put some distance between himself and Hornaday. That is all erased now as we see the damage to the 81 truck of Donnie Leah. Unfortunate for Donnie Leah in this ride for the first time, Randy Moss Motorsports. And you can see Star down on the inside comes up, but, but Donnie says, I'm in there. Star said, okay, sorry about that. And I'm what happens they when they get to turn one? Does David get loose? He gets loose, has to chase it up the hill. It, did, it didn't look like it was really out of shape, but you could tell it was loose. It wiggled. He had to chase it up the hill, and there the 81 was. Something we've seen happen so many times, and there it is right there. I promise you, Phil, it feels like there's just something sucking you into that truck on the outside. You go down into the corner, you can't believe how bad your truck wants to go over there where his is at. And David just couldn't keep it off of Donnie Leah. You know, we were, there's another look right here. Watch David. Now his truck is going to wiggle you right about there. there. You can see him in his hands in there. He was trying to work it out. Yeah. And we talked about what happened at Mansfield yeah. just a few months ago, but I'm telling you, under no circumstances was this deliberate. Right. And it was just, I was going to say that, it was just happenstance that I brought that up before this happened. David Starr had no intention of getting into that 81 of Donnie Lee. Maybe it was a premonition. <laughs> this is what Kyle Busch saw running in the 13th spot just behind these two. He said I'm running in the 11th spot now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's two, two spots, two spots right I just grabbed. So the safety workers Attending to the 81 of Donnie Lee, the crowd waiting for the final 47 laps of this race. We're just glad that Ray is a little more level now. <laughs> Welcome back, Camping World RV Rental 200. Continuing, let's go right back down to Adam Alexander. And we saw while a number of guys stayed out on that particular caution, one guy that came in, Kyle Busch, he lost a de decent amount of track position, but the reason he came down pit road, a very, very tight race truck. So they did make an adjustment. He will restart deep in the field. We could be getting ready to see a show from the wild thing here. You think Travis Quapple's thinking, I want some of this Ron Hornaday action I've heard so much about. I got the lead. I dare you, Ron. Come get you some of this. Well, he's about to find out. Green flag in the air. Travis Quapple just in front of Ron Hornaday, Eric Darnell, and Rick Crawford. Oh, and difficult for Travis Quapple. Oh, what's right in front of him? It's spinning the 17, gets turned around. Travis Quapple has to check up. Ron Hornaday goes by. T.J. Bell also moving by as the caution comes out. Man, I thought the 17 went in there awful aggressively. I guess I was right. You were right, exactly. Timothy Peters was trying to get out in front of Travis Quapple. I was trying to get, earn that lap back on his own in case something happened. And unfortunately, Timothy is the reason for the caution flag. I was too busy thinking, ain't no way he's going to make that corner to actually say it. Well, let's see now if Travis Quapple is your race leader. I mean, he had he's, to slow down because of 17. He's not your race leader. Not, the caution didn't come out until a few seconds after this spin so but there's loops that they have to go past i think they looped it yeah. on past it though yeah they're, they're i mean caution's not out yet rick so uh i think that ron hornaday will be our leader and now travis quapple may have an opportunity to do something with him on the restart but i, I like what you're saying rick because we don't know exactly where the loops are so there is a possibility that uh the caution flew prior to ron crossing a loop in front of Travis Quapple. And again, there are scoring loops around the racetrack. That's so NASCAR can make sure everyone gets back in the right position. Look at this, right? Side by side, a little contact yeah. there. Boy, our leader's lucky he didn't get taken out right there. Yeah, he was very, very on top of things. He backed off when he saw the 17 sideways. That allowed him to avoid the 17 when he turned around. A lot of damage on that 17. Rick Wren still trying to figure out, are we in front or not?
Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Camping World RV Rental 200. Green flag back in the air. It's Ron Hornaday in front of Travis Quaggle on this restart. See if Travis Quaggle can do anything with Ron Hornaday. He has proven to have equally as good a truck. Now he's battling the eight of Chad McCombie. The three wide off two. I think Travis Quaggle is saying, come on, guys. Let's work it out. <laughs> Don't, don't do this to me. I'm battling for a win here. Remember, Chad McCombie right now is battling to try to get that lucky dog. You see Eric Darnell on the outside. Eric's in the third spot. Adam Alexander. You guys talking about the lap traffic running in and around the leaders. And under that last caution, the frustration came out with the 09 bus. Crew Chief Chad Norris yelled up to the spotter stand and said, make sure you tell those guys we are racing for the win. They felt like the 17 situation may have cost them an opportunity to get the victory, and they wanted to make sure they didn't lose any more ground on this restart. Take a look at this. Brendan gone on the inside of that two of Jack Sprague. Three wide behind him. The nine of David Rudiman. Ted Musgrave in the middle, and the 60 of Terry Cook on the outside. Oh, a little bumping and banging going on back there. <laughs> Ted Musgrave says, come on, y'all. Give me, give me something. It closed in from both sides for Musgrave. Rudiman down on the bottom of the racetrack trying to complete that pass. Yeah, Rudiman is one of those trucks that came down pit road at the same time the 51 of Kyle Busch came down pit road. And he's still three wide down on the inside of the back straightaway into turn three. Kyle Busch has made it up into the 10th spot now as Kyle Busch trying to work his way up, get another victory in one of three NASCAR's top three series. Looks like the 22 of Michael Nett was trying to make it four wide for a moment. He was all the way down on the apron, coming off turn four. Well, that was a glob, wasn't it, Phil? Sure was. Ryan Scott in front of that 22 of Michael Annette. We know Ted Musgrave there, just in front of Rudiman, has two tires on, and Rudiman's been in the pit stack and has four fresh ones, but he can't do anything with Ted. It may take a few laps for his, his air pressures to build up. Watch David start right down in the bottom on the apron of the racetrack. There's fourth, fourth and, fifth. and fifth right there on the left. Johnny Benson on the inside of the 14 of Rick Crawford. Crawford was holding on to the fourth spot. Benson trying to take it away. Johnny Benson knows if I can get by Rick Crawford, that's five more points. He is able to clear Rick Crawford. Again, Hornaday in front of Travis Quapple. He's got a second lead over Travis Quapple. It was Quapple that was dominating after he came off of pit road under his green flag pit stop. He had put about three seconds between the two. The caution came out, and now Hornaday in front, and he starts to increase his lead. Some of that may be that clean air that we talk so much about. Ron Hornaday right now has that clean air. He is the fastest truck on the racetrack. Travis Quapple has fallen about a second behind. There's Tabo Dine right now. He currently runs in the sixth spot. There's that battle right in front of him for fourth between Johnny Benson and Rick Crawford. And Johnny Benson took those five points away from Rick Crawford by getting by him. And that's five more points that he could take away from Hornaday. But again, Hornaday showed us a week ago, you lead the most laps, you win the race. Johnny Benson did all he could, finished third, and still lost 25 points. Johnny must know Phil's math. He's trying to get up there and make it all work out. <laughs> he, he knew he had a mathematical chance. Hornaday did that. But, uh, he could catch him again. And now Travis Quaffle again running second right now to Hornaday. What's going on with him, Adam? I think what they need, Rick, is a long run here because what has happened on each and every restart today, it goes loose and gets tighter and tighter, and that's when they really gain ground on the competition. That's what we saw when they were able to cycle into the lead on that long green flag run earlier, and Travis just came on the radio and said the truck is loose. And what about Chad Norris? This is a crew chief that has worked with three different drivers this year, a rookie and John West Townley, who has experienced some success, and then he's had Bobby East in the truck, who he's helped to a couple of top tens this year his best ever finishes in nascar and now today he's got the veteran in a truck travis quapple in position for a victory at new hampshire you know and that's just refreshing rick when you when you work with some rookies and you see the potential that they have and you feel like you're making progress with your team and your trucks are good and then you get a guy like travis quapple who's who's won a championship right. he wins he knows how to race these trucks that's got to make chad say yes i was right we are good and we're going the right direction exactly Kind of fulfill what you have thought has been taking place all season. Here's Kyle Busch. He's moved up to the eighth spot all over the back bumper of that 88 of Matt Crafton. Yeah, Matt has the seventh spot right there. Kyle Busch has continually made progress. Remember, he came down pit road back on lap number 137. 
Just a handful of trucks came down pit road. Then he really had nothing to lose. He was towards the tail end of the lead lap trucks. Richie Waters able to make an adjustment on that truck. Looks like it made that truck better. Colin Brown right there at Conway Ford right behind Kyle. Colin is in a ninth spot. Now it's 1.5 seconds. The difference between the 33 of Ron Hornaday and the 09 of Travis Quaffle. But as they were talking about, Travis Quaffle's truck gets better with the longer runs. 29 laps remain here at Loudon, New Hampshire. Is that enough time for Travis Quaffle? We're about to find out. Ron Hornaday continuing to lead. Darnell Benson and Crawford are your top five. We've got spins going on the racetrack right now. Michael, it's Annette. Michael Annette with problems. Up in the middle of turn one and two with under. They had a tough battle going with Brian Scott and David Rudiman. I think he and Scott maybe were side by side when uh, Annette's truck went around. You could see a lot of damage to that truck. Folks, we were going to try to slip away to a quick commercial break, but since the accident took place, we wanted to stay here and document what has happened. Again, Ron Hornaday in front, Travis Quaffle running second. This is what just took place. See, he looks like maybe Scott got into the left rear, maybe, Phil. And looks like he just shot to the outside yeah. of the racetrack. Maybe he got hit, maybe sideways a little bit. We'll study a little bit, figure it out. And give you everything we've learned when we come back. Again, Michael and I bringing out our sixth caution of the day. And again, welcome back to Live New Hampshire, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Bruton Smith on hand watching this one. This car Craftsman Truck Series and the green flag about to come back out. Run Hornaday in front of Travis Quaffle, the final 25 laps of the race, and you'll see them all right here on speed. See Skinner trying to dive to the inside of Jason White. He wants to get in position to get the lucky dog. Travis Quaffle able to hang with Ron Hornaday for a moment. Jason White wants that lucky dog too, Phil, so those guys are battling down on the inside of Johnny Benson. Fortunately for Travis Quaffle, he was able to clear the lap trucks, and now he's got a clear view of Mike Skinner, but all over his back is Eric Darnell. The big time wiggle right there by Travis Quaffle. Eric pulled up on his tailgate. Got Travis, got Travis a little bit loose. Wiggles here cost you so much. This is such a momentum racetrack. You know, you've got to have all that speed on these long straightaways. When you get sideways exiting a corner, it hurts you all the way down the straightaway. And look, Eric Darnell's down on the inside of Quaffle. Trying to take that second spot away from Travis Quapple is Eric Darnell. Darnell on the bottom of the racetrack. Not always the preferred line on this racetrack. Quapple up higher, keeping the momentum up, trying to stay in front of that 99. I'll tell you, that big win at Michigan a few races ago for Eric Darnell really started him on a great low run. Six of the last eight races, top six finishes for Eric Darnell. Ray Dunlap. And Darnell just said on the radio moments ago that it's starting to free up a little bit because the track is actually changing, getting a little bit of shade down here in one and two. He said, I like it a lot, though. It's coming around to right where I want it. Darnell right up there. See if he can give them a challenge to the 09, his teammate, or to Hornaday. Yeah, 23 of Johnny Benson just takes a spot away from the 99 and so Johnny Benson all the way up into third now. Yeah, that last time through one and two, Eric Danell got a little bit loose and that's what allowed the 23 of Johnny Benson to get up. Behind. Let's see if we can take a look back at what happened to Eric Danell the last time through one and two. Watch, he's on the inside racing his teammate, Travis Quapple. Watch right here, he's gonna look, get a little bit loose, Michael. You see that front tire go back and forth and look at the momentum that Johnny gets. Yeah, and look at the ground he's losing to Travis. You just can't bobble off the corner or it's gonna cost you here at Loudon. About a second separating Hornaday and Quapple on the racetrack and now Johnny Benson throwing that 23 truck right into the mix in third. And remember, that's another five points for Johnny Benson. That position, getting ahead of Eric Donnell, five more points for him. About Kyle Busch making the move up. Now Kyle Busch looking to break into the top five. He's running seventh right now, Adam. And for the longest time, he was stuck in the 13th position. As far back as 25th at one time in this race. But as you mentioned, Ricky's on the move. He was saying on the radio, I can't get around the 88. He's running the same line as I am. Well, as you can see, he's around him now through turns one and two, trying to make a move yeah. and gain more positions and get a top five. Oh, problems in turn one and two. And it's David Rudeman once again into the wall now in that number nine. 
David Starr was down on the inside of Rudiman, just drove in there and lost control of his truck and hit Rudiman and knocked him into the outside wall. A whole lot like we saw with Skinner and Rudiman earlier where the truck on the bottom got loose. But this was uh, this might get your nerves a little bit if you're Rudiman because it was just the first time he had seen David Starr. They got to turn one, he just drove in there and hit him. Then remember David Starr and Donnie Leah. Same thing down at turn number one. David Starr got loose on the inside. Donnie Leah paid the price. Look at the damage to the back of that race truck. Not a real good look at it. That David Starr just uh, was able to get some momentum off four and got on the inside of Rudiman and, and lost his truck. Yeah, we've got an onboard camera with David Rudiman. Toyota onboard. Let's see if we can take a look at it. You see David on the inside of David Rudiman as they drive down in turn number one. Watch this now. Boom. Just, just got loose. Had to chase that truck. When you, when you get loose like that, you cannot turn your steering wheel to the left because it's going to spin yourself out. So when you try to catch that truck, you go up the racetrack, and that's the result, and that's who paid the price that time, David Rudiman. So a lot of damage to the back of this race truck. Out of contention for the win today. David Rudiman will have to bring that truck onto pit road and have service done to it. A lot of other trucks making the move onto pit road as well. Skinner, Terry Cook, Ted Musgrave back on pit road. Mike Skinner gets the Aaron's lucky dog. He's over the line. He's going to have to back up to do work on that truck. And you see the crew rolls him back. Aaron's lucky dog for Mike Skinner. See the back of that truck as a result of a spin earlier in the race where he and, he and Rudiman got together. And now, uh, now Rudiman's got damage all over the back of his because of getting together with uh, David Starr. Again, it's Ron Hornaday in front of Travis Quapple and Jason or the 23 of Johnny Benson back in third. Adam Alexander, what's going on with that 09? It's going to be interesting to watch him on the restart because for those guys, it takes a couple of laps to get going. So Chad Norris said, play defense here, hold Johnny Benson off on the restart, and then see if we can make it happen. They felt like it came to him a little bit quicker after that last caution. We'll see what happens when the green flag goes back in the air next time. I think it's fun to see the progress Johnny Benson has made uh, he and Trip Bruce on that truck. You know, early in the going, he looked like he was going to be Jack the Bear, and then it went away. He couldn't keep up. He fell back to sixth or seventh, really, and was struggling to stay there, and they've made that truck better, and Johnny Benson methodically has moved his way up to the third spot. You can see from third back to seventh, now back up to third, and he's got the guy running second worried. He said, we got to hold off Johnny Benson for a few laps if we're going to have any chance at all to get Hornaday. So that truck's really strong right now. But it looks like Ron Hornaday's truck really likes that clean air out front. He's been able to run some real fast lap times and been able to hold off that 09 of Travis Quap. You know, a year ago, Ron Hornaday led 174 laps in his win. Up to this point, he's led 132, and there's only 17 remaining. You know, I think before this race started, Phil, if you said who's going to win the championship, you basically did. You said Ron Hornaday is. Ron's 90-some points behind going into this race. That's what kind of role this team's on. Oh, yeah. Everybody's, even though Johnny's got a 90-some point lead, people are like, Ron's going to be the guy to beat. Well, but you think about it, you look at Johnny Benson and his last five races, a win, a win, a win, fourth and third. And now he's sitting in third and Battling for second with Travis Quapple. Green flag back in the air. The final 16 laps of this race. Look at Kyle Busch dive to the bottom of the racetrack into one underneath Todd Bodine trying to get the spot. He knows he's got lap trucks in front of him. Let's see if he can move Todd up to make him some room in the middle. Three wide as they come out of turn number two and head down the back stretch. Rick Crawford running fifth. Kyle Busch right on his back bumper. Real, real heavy traffic again. there. There's teammates. The 10 and the 14 running side by side. Crawford moving in front. Four wide? Is that four wide? Looks like four wide <laughs> to me. Four wide. I love four wide here at Loudon. Four wide. Oh, we got the Friend of God gets turned around. And right behind him, the Conway Brake gets turned around. Around goes the 88 of Matt Crafton as well. What an incredible turn of events right here for some of these guys. Matt Crafton, third place in points. Gets turned around, does get it back going. There's Colin Brown, our rookie leader. A lot of damage to the front of that Conway Ford. You can't go four wide. It's not going to work. It didn't. We got oh, no, fire got... there behind the six. That means his oil tank is bust. Oil cooler yeah. is busted. Yeah. Or maybe it's, yeah, that's, it looks like an oil file versus a, yeah, versus a uh, fuel fire. We could see a red flag here. 
Very inspired. wisely, Kyle yeah. pulls to the inside and gets in the grass. It appears as though the the fire has gone out on that uh, on that Ford. Colin Colin's Brown gonna jumping jump out, out of that truck. I'm not gonna stick around and make sure. It's well, out. a lot of times you guys as drivers are driving along and maybe don't know that you've got a fire behind you, and your spotter tells you, "Hey, you're on fire. You better jump out." I generally know when I'm on fire. Do you? Yeah, generally. <laughs> Generally speaking, yeah, sometimes it could be under the hood and you really not know, as you mentioned, Rick. Uh, Let's see if this four wide action, Bill, on the front straightaway is what led to this crash. See Todd go by there, the zero, uh, the 15 of Jason White. Uh, see Brennan, he got a little bit loose on the inside of Kyle Busch. That started it. That started it. And then looked like the six of Colin Brown was spinning right behind that. Yep. Jack Sprague got into the back of the 88. That's what got Matt Crafton turned around. Matt's on pit road. There's another view right here going in turn number one. Rick Crawford right out in front of this three and four wide battle. The 10 and the 51 definitely made contact. Yeah, there's two crashes going on, though. Somebody has got the back of Colin Brown and got him into the outside wall. That 88 got turned around and kept right on going. But he had to come to pit road, so that's going to cost him dearly. Brendan loses control of his truck, and for some reason, the six went around behind these guys. He might have been looking at them saying, you're not going four wide, are you? <laughs> And somebody run over him. Yeah. Kyle Busch right here. He's trying to get by the 30 of Top O'Dine. There's a 10 on the inside. Brendan gone. Remember now, Kyle Busch is thinking, I've got two trucks on the outside of me. And you can hear his tires squealing. <laughs> somebody got into him, and he was about to spin out himself, but he made it. Caution comes out. They'll get out of the gas. So damage to the six. Didn't look like so much damage to the 88. The 10 got turned around and some more damage. The flames were rolling out of the back of the Conway Freight Ford F-150. So he pulled it onto the access road, jumped out, and now the safety crew attending to that vehicle. We will be right back with the green flag. They're letting them know what to go. It will be a single file restart as we have just 10 laps remaining. Win. They get to the start finish line. They will have nine to go. It is Ron Hornady in front of Travis Quaffle, Johnny Benson, Eric Darnell, and Rick Crawford, your top five. Now, so don't you think Ron's pretty confident right now? I mean, he's had a solid truck. His restart, his starts are legendary. He's got to feel like he's pretty good shape. I think so, absolutely. He hasn't he hasn't faltered on any of these restarts. He hasn't spun the tires. He hasn't missed any gears, Ray. I think he you feel like he has it in the bag, Ray. He feels good about his race truck, but not good about the track at all. He came on the radio and said, this track is nowhere near ready to go back to green. Randy Kaiser, the pace truck driver, called up to the tower and said, we're good to go. Hornaday says, absolutely not. There's still oil on the racetrack. So that could come into play. Ron Hornaday will be the first truck to get to it if there is something on the racetrack. Green flag back in the air. Travis Quapple right behind it. Great start by Travis. He closed right up on the back of Ron Hornaday. Look at Kyle Busch on the outside, three wide in turn one. The top oh, one went by the inside of Rick Crawford. Crawford a little bump on the back of the 51, but he's able to make the pass, and so Kyle Busch passing them where they're not. Not a speedy drive there off of turn number two. Looks like everybody made it through. Johnny Benson to second place. Drives right up on the back bumper of Ron Hornaday. Johnny Benson focused on this championship and now focused on the 33 of Ron Hornaday. Wanting to get to victory lane here at Loudon, New Hampshire. Wow, power move by Johnny Benson. He has rebounded solidly. He really has. Another five-point gain for Johnny Benson. Eric Donnell looking to the inside of Travis Quapple for that third spot. Not able to do it that time. He can't do anything with Travis. Kyle Busch has made his way up into the top five. Three wide, Jack Sprague in the middle. T.J. Bell got way wide off turn four, opened up, or excuse me, off two, opened up that bottom lane for Sprague, and these two are together off four. Oh, bumping and banging again, seven laps to go here at Loudoun. Yeah, Kyle, T.J. Bell right there was not happy with Jack Sprague, using him up off down the front straightaway. Oh, spin Todd right in the middle, Todd Lodine gets into the wall. That will bring out another caution, the ninth of the day, here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. It is heating up. And that will give Johnny Benson an opportunity to try to do something with Ron Hornaday on a restart. Wow. Todd Bodine back up through the gears. This is tense. We had two groups of truck bells, two groups of trucks bell off into turn one, three wide. 
And let's it didn't see work can, out. Yeah, let's see what, can ha what happened to Todd Bodine this last time down there in turn number one. See David Starr down on the inside. That's that's the third truck that David Starr has been on the inside of and made contact with that left rear and it puts Todd Bodine into the outside wall. Man. Take a look at David Starr's on board. You can see Todd left him plenty of room. He just didn't have control of his truck. And that's, like you said, three times we've seen David Starr in that exact same situation. You know, when you when you when you get wrecked like that, when you when you wreck somebody like that the first time, everybody says that's it's hard road or hard road to hold down there on the bottom. But for the third time, you have to start saying, "Dude, give me a break." A lot of damage to that lumber liquidators Toyota of Tabo Nine. Yep. one of our top five point contenders looking for a good run here. Yeah, does he almost have to limp his way around now? I mean, he can't come back to pit road. Oh, well, yeah, I think, I think Tabo Nine will come. Does he have road. to? Oh, yeah, he's oh, got to yeah. fix that truck. Yeah. A lot of damage. Right now, if the race were to end like they're running, Ron Hornaday would gain 20 points on Johnny Benson. If you remember the math at the beginning of the race, <laughs> what's he supposed to gain? 15. 15. Only 15. He 15. So he's going to make a little bit better move than, than what I had averaged for him for the last eight races. But I just found that terribly interesting. You you repeated Ron's finish of the last five. I mean, excuse me, Johnny's finishes first, first, third, fifth. And, and yet we all are saying, here comes Ron. Ron's going to get him, right? Good bit of damage on the left side here for Top Dine's Lumber Liquidators Toyota. Puka is pulling out that front fender. They're going to put some tires on this thing. And you see on the very back, the spoiler and the rear end is sucked way up in the air. Whether or not he'll be able to keep this thing under him, I'm not sure. Even though we only have a few laps left, they put left side tires on it and some fuel. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race winners this season. Benson Hornaday both with four wins. Kyle Busch has got three. And now the top two in points are looking to make it five wins on the 2008 season. Running one and two, Hornaday and Benson. They're one and two in points. Reverse the order on the racetrack. Green flag back in the air. Another good start by Ron Hornaday. He opens up about a truck length over Johnny Benson. See Kyle Busch now trying to get four spot away from Eric Darnell. Little bumping there. They're oh, sideways. sideways. They come out of turn number two. Opening up the door for Rick Crawford. Crawford trying to make the pass and move back up into that top five. He is able to make the pass right now for a moment. He'll try to hold on to it now as he's got his sights set on Eric Darnell. Kyle Busch working the outside. 11 of David Starr. Watch out. He's on the inside of the 51 right now. Three laps remaining. It is Hornaday, four tenths of a second in front of Johnny Benson. Look at Kyle on the outside trying to do something with Rick Crawford. Not able to do it down in one and two. A big separation between one, two, and three on the racetrack. Hornaday, Benson, and Quapple, they've separated themselves. And now, look at the gaggle of trucks back here. Four wide in the three again. Rudiman. Oh, contact there between Ted Musgrave and the 88 of Matt Crafton. Well, Musgrave really up. having to fight that truck. Does a nice job saving it. Loses about five spots in the process. A little over two miles remain here at New Hampshire. These guys are desperate right now, Phil. They want every spot they can get. Ron Hornaday's looking in his mirror, smiling, saying, I'm yarding these guys. Smooth sailing in the front. You're running back 10th or 12th. Boy, it's a mess. Ron Hornaday, a half a second over Johnny Benson. Hornaday looking to make it back-to-back -back wins. He won a week ago. Now gets the white flag. He's under a mile away from another victory. What a nice cap to a, a very long week for Ron Hornaday this week if he can pull this thing off. Johnny Benson hugging that yellow line, trying to hold on to second now as the top three make their way down the backstretch. Ron Hornaday looking to add to his series record of wins. He's got 37 coming into this. He's going to add to it today. Coming out of turn number four, Ron Hornaday will see the checkered flag for the 38th time in his career. Great job by Travis Quabble finishing third, his best finish of the season. Eric Darnell with another top five, and Rick Crawford gets a top five in a place that he's won before. Another dominant performance by Ron Hornaday. He led 148 laps a year ago. He led 174 laps in his win. That makes it three wins at this racetrack for Ron Hornaday. Now let's take a look at today's stay in the game with Just For Men hair color moment. And it has to be the pass.
Watch Timothy Peters on the inside, Rick. They make a little contact. Timothy's going to get turned around. Travis has to slow down. And meanwhile, Ron Hornaday just drives by him for the pass for the lead. Stay in the game with Just For Men hair color. That is the moment Ron Hornaday made the pass and solidified the win. Issues going on down on pit road right now. David Starr obviously staying in his truck now climbing out. He's got some enemies on the racetrack right now and they are going to fight it out. Not happy at all. These two teams mixing it up. The NASCAR officials are jumping in. The problem took place when David Starr moved all the way up and got right up next to the 30 of Todd Bodine on the pit road. That started before the 30 moved up to the 11. They, they exchanged some words and the 11 drove away from him and then the, the, or excuse me, the 30 pulled away from the 11 and then the 11 came back at the 30 on pit road. NASCAR will not smile will not think uh, much of this activity. It's one thing to, to argue with one another, but uh, you know, driving your truck over toward them. You can see this is after the race. Todd comes flying up to David Starr, gives him a little hit in the rear end, and he's just gonna, he's gonna pull up beside him and tell him what he thought of that. Okay, they're on pit road. And so this is, a, this is a little bit out of bounds, but here goes Todd. Todd just separates himself, but then the 11 decides he's gonna go get him some of it. Todd gets out of his car or his truck. Emotions run high down here, Adam. And Mike Kilman Sr. and Mike Kilman Jr., two of the guys that are involved, and they're back at it again. They had slowed it down. The NASCAR officials had calmed everyone down. David Starr climbed from his truck, and now there are four or five guys from Jermaine Racing going after David Starr. One of them climbing up on Todd Bodine's truck. And things starting to simmer once again. A NASCAR official has got a hold of Mike Kilman Sr. Dennis Adcock, one of the lead officials for NASCAR, right in the middle of this. It had settled down after one of the guys from Jermaine Racing had pulled David Starr from his truck with him still having his helmet on. Then everybody calmed down. Mike Hillman Jr., the crew chief for Todd Bodine, came down, and Mike Hillman Sr., the general manager for Jermaine Racing, was down here as well. And once again, it would appear that NASCAR has got this under control. But we know what it's like on short tracks. Todd Bodine getting turned late in the race, and we see the result. This is the incident that took place. That was David Starr getting and into now, the back and now, of the 30. now Todd Bodine is down here talking to David Starr, and this is a much calmer situation than what we've seen from Todd's crew members. Here we're seeing the contact again from David Starr's onboard, Adam. And Obviously, uh, you know, the emotions run high there. There's we, there we see David Starr walking away, some of his guys escorting him. Heated tempers, both on the racetrack and now off the racetrack on pit road. And oh, by the way, Ron Hornaday is making his way to victory lane again for the 38th time in his career, the third time he's won at this racetrack. We'll be back to hear from our winner right after this.